Hey guys, today at the off-grid cabin in the woods, we're making hot water using a water tank, standard hot water tank, and we're gonna convert it to burn wood to make hot water. Hey guys, it's another great day in the woods. We're at the uh, off-grid cabin today. I'm going to try something interesting. I've always kind of wanted to do this. It's it's been on my it's been on my bucket list, and that's uh, hot water. But a hot water system using a water tank. So a conventional home hot water tank, I'm going to give it a, uh, a little bit of snip snip and uh, chop chop, and I'm gonna see if I can make it uh, wood fired. Do you think that'll work? I don't know if it's going to work. I've never seen it before. I have uh, willfully not searched it, and uh, we're gonna see if we can get it uh, to work. So I've got an old hot water tank. I guess it's a water tank. It's not a hot water tank. If it was a hot water tank, it would just be full of hot water, and why would you need to heat it? Let's see if this is gonna work. Disclaimer, don't try this at home. So this guy here is a regular gas fired hot water tank and I am going to see what's inside here. This looks like a firebox if I've ever seen a firebox. I'm gonna give the old, make the old hot water hysterectomy. I'm going to take all the guts out and uh, I'm gonna see if I can make it wood fired. So uh, Bean's here for the ride. Hey Bean, what do you think? Safety officer Bean, hello. Well, hopefully it doesn't blow up. That's the uh, that's the main thing. So yeah, they are gonna take the bottom. Let's see what's inside. Ever, ever opened up a hot water tank? I think I did see that Mythbusters episode. Actually, I think I know what the worst that can happen. But I'm not removing any of the safety valves. We're gonna do batch burning. Batch burning hot water. Safe, safe. Do you guys see in there? Look at there's like a, there's like a firebox already built in there. So that's the that's the chimney going up. So that chimney goes up. Chimney. It's the flue vent, and it comes out here, which is the top of the hot water tank. So. In theory, if I just put wood in here, it should heat up hot water. Let's uh, let's get this thing a stand, plumb it in. This is a uh, tire rim for the back of uh, back tire on a dump truck. So this is the rim. They're very useful for fire pits, or in this case, to stand a hot water tank up. <laughs> it was like it was designed for that. That's insane how well that fit. What I'm doing now actually is uh, cutting these pipes off. And then what I'm doing that for is because the hot gases are gonna come out of here, right? So this is the exhaust pipe and I want to use PEX, which is that flexible water line. But I want to come off the tank with something that's not going to burn. So I'm going to put some elbows on here, come off the side, or maybe right off the back, and then down. Gives me a little bit of a buffer from the hot gases. You guys are going to learn how to solder. Ever soldered pipes before? It's not hard. Start off with some little sandpaper, and you want to scratch the pipe or clean the pipe off. Old pipe seems to need a little bit more. Ever see what's in one of these things? Oh, well, pull this out. Come on. Maybe it won't come out. I want to pull it out. World's coolest wind chime if I can get it out. Well, maybe not the coolest wind chime, but it's pretty neat. Okay, ready for this? Isn't that neat? I think that disturbs the uh, the gases coming out, making it more efficient. So that's uh, that's in your hot water. We're gonna put it back in. So with this guy, actually, when you're converting this to a wood-fired. Uh, hot water heater. Like I said, I've never done this before, but I imagine you should probably clean this little guy out every once in a while because it's going to build up with creosote. Um, maybe snake that pipe too, but uh, we're going to put that back in. But if you're not, if you're just taking your partner a hot water tank for fun and you want a really cool wind chime, that's where they hide the wind chime. I imagine there's a right way to do this and a wrong way to do this whether or not you flux both sides or you flux just one side. I'm the adage of you can't have too much flux. There, so those two items are fluxed up. 
discount bag of elbows in a Ziploc bag. Elbow. Elbow. You want to scratch these guys up too. Little scratch tool. Stick it inside. So once you got those all scratched up, flux the inside of those. Flux. 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 Gotta make sure you clean all your ends. Flux. 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 If you don't know what you're doing, you might as well make it tidy looking. Peck starters. So this allows you to go from uh, copper to pecs. So I'm gonna attach that to there. Flux that end. Do you think they could make a brush that did lose their hair? Soldering 101. Solder, torch. You wanna heat the fitting. Heat the fitting. Solder should flow into the joint. Like that. So let those cool down and um, we're ready to hook this thing up to our water system. You should wipe them first with like a damp cloth and it gets rid of the flux so your pipes don't turn green. I don't have one of the rags here today. It's the residual flux that's on the joint, it's acid, right? So it eats away at the pipe, turns it all green. You look at a new house, they're all green. People don't tend to wipe them. I don't think it, I'm sure eventually it'll eat through. Oh, we're gonna tie the, uh, the water system into the tank now because we can't fill it up without water. So we're gonna pump the water from our pump to our cold side of our hot water tank because you don't want to run a tank without water in it. Tea. Chunk of pipe. We're going to hook up our cold side of the tank and make our pipe and give it our cut. Put our pinch ring over top of our pipe. You want to give it a little bit of space, slide it over. There, it's that easy. What do you think of my candy cane pipe? I like red. I had red left over from a radiant heating floor job. So this is, uh, this is what's left over. So I always save my spare pieces. This is the hot water feed that's gonna go from the tank into the kitchen sink, or hopefully we get some hot water. I'm going to run it from the tank. Actually, I'm gonna run it from the inside sink to the tank, because it's just easier that way. The last time we, uh, we hooked up the cold water, we left, I actually put a, uh, a valve on here, so it's easy. Just put in the pinch ring, I don't know if you guys can see that. The pinch ring on the, on the hot water feed. Basically putting the valve in and crimping it on. It's always good to see past your nose when you're doing a job, especially if you're thinking of doing something afterwards. All we got to do now is uh, fill the tank, like the fire. That's filling the tank right now, and it's not quite hooked up to the tank. So we got about 40 gallons before the tank's full. Let's go hook that up. Valve's already. how long it takes to fill 40 gallons. You see the air is uh, getting pushed out of the tank because the tank is filling up with our uh, system. Okay. Now all we have to do is wait for this thing to fill and then we can light the fire. Just to sum this whole system up, first of all, we have to collect the water. So we got the rainwater coming in, hitting the roof, coming down on to our gutter system, which is a reclaimed ABS pipe that we've cut a strip into. You can watch a video on that. And then it comes down here and it gets collected in this IBC tote. You can see our water level is up right about here. So then we got an RV pump with a 12 volt battery. And then that's pumping, basically filling the tank right now. We take this natural gas hot water tank and we've removed the gas portion of it and we've fashioned a firebox. So this is going to be our firebox where we're gonna load wood directly into here and we're gonna heat some hot water. As the uh, water or air gets pushed out of the tank, you can see there's no, uh, there's just air coming out of here now. If you go cold side, you're gonna get, oh, there's the cold. 
So the hot is not quite there yet. It still has to fill the tank. So we're just gonna push the uh, air out of the tank. An old B vent. If you don't know what a B vent is, it's a piece of venting for gas. It's got a little bit of insulation and I'm gonna, it happens to fit pretty darn good right on top of that. We're ready to light this bad boy up. Fortunately, there's a lot of sticks around here. There is a slight learning curve when it comes to converting a uh, natural gas hot water tank to a wood fired one. What I'm finding is that the center tube, there seems to be condensation dripping down onto the fires. And an idea of efficiency, I think you, you wanna build your fire outside, basically away from that center chimney port or where the, where the hot gases go up because it's basically dripping down on the fire trying to put it out. Can you guys hear that? That's the sound of water heating up. Our fire is uh, not getting rained on, so there's not as much condensation being produced. I think we're uh, we're getting close to having some uh, some hot water. Probably been an hour or so. We haven't uh, probably put like one full log in, which is the log like probably about six inches or so in diameter. When firing up your water heater, you want to add just the right amount of wood. There's a little bit of trial and error involved with that you don't want to boil your water. If you boil your water, it's going to produce steam. The steam's going to expand. It's got nowhere to go. It's going to explode. There is a fail safe. There's a pressure relief valve on the side, but you don't want to rely on that. That's like sort of last resort. Have the right amount of wood. Don't overfire. We're going to go try and see if we've got some hot water. I'm uh, curious. I don't want to overboil it. Oh yeah. Look at that. Hot water. See the steam coat off of there? See that steam? That's nice. That's a nice temperature. We're getting hotter. <laughs> you can watch this. You can watch the sink now. Look at that. I don't know how much hot water we need. That's one less problem we have at the off-grid cabin. We now have hot water. That is very exciting. We can wash our dishes. We can, we can go further. We can actually make an outdoor shower now or uh, forest bathing. That'd be kind of neat to have hot water when you're doing that. This build cost absolutely nothing. This hot water tank came from a scrapyard. We had some leftover fittings we used and we didn't have to do much modification at all. We basically took the burner out and we added wood to it and, and that's exciting. Uh, I'm impressed that it worked. So anyways, join me on the next build.